Hello and welcome back to The Good Mood with The Good Dude. In this episode, I'm gonna be painting a skink from the new Underworld's Diachasm box in a Day of the Dead color scheme. If you've been following my channel at all, then you know that I love lizard men, um, or whatever they're called these days. And so when this kit was announced, you know I just had to get my greedy hands on it. My local GW also holds a competition, painting competition every three months. And this box was released uh, maybe three weeks before that competition. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to paint something fresh and also in a different scheme because usually I'm just a bit of a, a box art bitch and just paint things the way they are on the box. And so with this one, I really wanted to try and do something different. A scheme that I've been thinking about for a while is a Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertos scheme after the, the festival in Mexico. And I originally wanted to do it for my, my skink quartet those musicians, I thought they would be really cool in that scheme. And so this is a bit of a trial run of the scheme. I think it's also kind of a, a natural fit for lizard men because Lustria, the continent from the old world that they came from, is obviously modeled on the new world in our own earth, the, the Americas. You know, Day of the Dead is, according to some sources, a continuation of that kind of Aztec culture. According to other sources, it's that's actually kind of just a branding thing and it's really just a Catholic festival. In any case, I think there's a clear thematic continuity, thematic consistency to do lizard men, Aztec inspired lizard men in this Day of the Dead Mexican festival kind of style. Okay, let's get this box open and start assembling our mini. Okay, let me give you my initial thoughts on this kit. Uh, first, as you would expect from GW Plastic, the cast is super fine quality, really, really nice. The mold lines are almost non-existent. I mean, when you compare these sorts of new kits to the old kits, it's kind of mind blowing to see just how far their techniques and technology have come. Um, but honestly, that's kind of where the positive things I have to say end. So. If you don't want to hear my whinging and moaning, then skip ahead to the next section. If you're still here, prepare for some whinging and moaning. Uh, first of all, you know, the bases, they come on a, the, like they cast into the sprue rather than being the little black boys that I'm, you know, familiar with and, and love. Oops. Hey, hey. You want to buy some bases? So on the one hand, that allows the sculptors to create more dynamic poses because they can change the position of the feet. But on the other hand, um, I don't know. I don't like the way that it kind of removes the element for custom customization or make, anyway, makes it harder. Now I didn't have anything in particular planned for these bases, so it wasn't a huge deal, but nevertheless, I don't like what it sort of signals for what's gonna come in future releases. Second thing, this was my first time dealing with these push fit, mold, push fit uh, kits. And I don't know if push fit is the same as easy to build or if they're two different things. Um, but yeah, I found it an absolute pain in the ass. Like, I just didn't like the fact that I was having to push, right? Apply force to my miniature to get it to fit together. I kind of felt like I was just gonna break the thing. Yeah, I was just worried that I was gonna fucking snap the bloody thing. And so I never have that concern when I'm using glue. So I prefer place to fit with glue <laughs> rather than push to fit. I did not want to be pushing my miniatures. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be, it's going to be snap to fit, break to fit, push to break minis. That's what they should be called. Anyway, don't like that. It's also a bit strange because it kind of feels like you're putting together a toy uh, from a super expensive Kinder Surprise because like those little toys snap together in the same sort of way. And I mean, I guess that's, that's fine. I mean, I like Kinder Surprise toys as much as the next person. Okay, maybe I like them slightly more than the next person. But yeah, it's weird. Uh, the final thing is something that's not p particular to like the casting. Um, and it was something that I knew before I actually purchased the kit because it's sculpts and uh, the sculpts of the skinks in particular 
Honestly, I just think that they're fucking ugly. Ugly bastards. And some people might like them. They obviously look quite ferocious. They look mean. Yeah, I much prefer the, the style of the Blood Bowl skinks. I mean, I prefer the style of the, the old skinks, like the, as in the current skin kids, over these ones. Their jaws are like super kind of like chatty, chad-like fucking jaws that come right out, sharp. Um, their snouts, like their noses protrude above their, their faces. Their, their faces are really short. Um, they've even got like their little ear holes are actually kind of protruding in some way. And yeah, I just think they look fucking shit. Um, so that's a personal opinion, obviously, but you know, if that's the way that the future skin kits are going to be, um, sculpted, then that's pretty disappointing from my perspective. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to buy a bunch of old skin kits to just have a reservoir, um, a reserve of, of skinks that I can use for conversions and stuff because, yeah, these new skinks just look fucking hideous in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You know, apparently a lot of people like them, you know. A lot of people are fucking idiots. Not saying that the two are the same. Maybe I'm the fucking idiot. Anyway, a lot of people like them. I don't like them. So the two skinks that have their uh, their hands down, I'm never going to paint those guys. Fuck those guys. Uh, put them in the fucking bin. Uh, anyway, let's go and paint Tixie, Kixie, Tark, Tixie, Parker, uh, Kixie, Tarka. Let's go paint Kixie, Tarka. To paint my lizards, I spent a fair bit of time looking at pictures uh, of the Day of the Dead festival. Um, and uh, since I'm a, a Whitey McWhite person, I watched Disney's Coco for a bit of inspiration. It was very colourful, so it was quite good. Um, but yeah, I kind of then developed a colour palette based on this. I've got blacks, obviously, some purples, yellow, like a yellow, yellowy orange, red. And uh, those are the main sorts of colors that I was going to be using. Of course, ivory or like a white uh, for the skeleton and skulls. There's obviously a lot of symbolism that's sort of associated with these colors and this imagery that I don't really know about um, because, you know, I'm, I'm from fucking Australia, which is, I mean, I have the internet, so I, I could have done more research, but I suppose because I'm lazy and I haven't just sort of, uh, you know, absorbed this through kind of osmosis. Um, so, you know, ap apologies if it turns out that uh, Dia de Muertos is actually some kind of indigenous custom that has been, you know, that it continues into the present day in the form of this festival, then I apologize uh, for the sort of the cultural appropriation that's going on here. Um, if it turns out that it is just some fucking Catholic festival that happens to be um, practiced by Mexican people, then, you know, fuck yeah, whatever. I'm not bothered. <laughs> um, no, ignorance. Um, anyway, I'm painting my lizard like a dark color. Um, I'm base coating all the flesh in staggered on scale green or a mix of that and uh, a bad and black to bring it down. Um, then I'm going to be hitting it with a wash of Celia green shade. Um, I then start painting over the top of this flesh, paint painting the skeleton because obviously Day of the Dead, he's got to be a skeleton. And I start that with a gray, which I then lighten over successive coats of lighter grays, moving into ivory and then some white highlights. Throughout this process, I then came back with black to create contrast between the edges of the skeleton paint on his body and kind of black paint that he would also have on. So I'm sort of imagining that he's got dark green, blue flesh, and then he's painting the black and the skeleton on top of that. In general, there was a lot of trial and error with this piece. Uh, when it came time to paint the feathers, I originally started doing them in the yellow, like you would have for the yellow flowers, and then I thought that, that didn't quite look right, and so went for a slightly something more like an orange, and then decided just to go full into red. Um, eventually, I was I was happy with that, but all over with this thing, I knew that I wanted to do these sort of different patterns and. I Incorporate the colors of the Day of the Dead color palette, but I didn't really know where to put stuff. A lot of a lot of guesswork went into this. This would be the sort of thing where if you were more prepared, you would do a mock-up um, on on the computer first, and then you would know what to do. But I didn't have that much time, and I just. Good evening. 
since I do not yet have the techniques or technology to film myself painting fine details, I thought I would take this opportunity to instead show you some of the equipment that I used to achieve the results that you will see later in this video. For paints, I mostly use basic model paints such as Citadel and Viejo, brands that you might be familiar with yourself. But for my whites, I like to use Liquitex Titanium White, great for my highest highlights. I then combine my paints with Liquitex Flow Aid, which must be diluted in water. I like to keep this dropper bottle full of ready-made mixture handy, so it's easy to apply to my wet palette whenever I need it. Now I think the discerning hobbyist should use distilled water, but I just make do with water straight from the tap. When it comes to brushes, I've been using this small brush from Squidma's new set, and I must say, it is a wonderful set of brushes. To my eye, this looks like about a size zero in a Winsor & Newton Series 7. Finally, I have this non-branded set of magnifiers from the exotic shores of China, which only cost me about $20 to $25. Now, it goes up to a magnification power of 3.5, although I find myself mainly using 2 or 1.5 times magnification. Now, I have seen some very talented painters on Instagram who report using magnification power up to times 8. That seems pretty wild to me. <laughs> yes. Other than that, I would just recommend a healthy dose of patience and persistence, and you'll get painting some fine details too. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it's currently the 13th of April, it's Tuesday. The competition that I want to have this piece done for is on Saturday, the 17th of April, so I've got five days. four days left to finish it and I'm not particularly happy with where I'm at. So I've been doing a bunch of detail work off camera because like I can't wear my magnifiers and have my phone in front of me and stuff. Um, so that's what I've been trying to work on for like a week or so and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. Um, there's still a bit to do. I think I probably need to start to move into doing non-detail work and finishing that off and then I can make a decision about how much of the detail work I want to have complete for this competition and how much I can just let it go right so there's things right now where like the mouth is not done the tongue is not done teeth claws that sort of stuff so I need to get that all those essentials done first and then I can come back and figure out how much work I want to put into to details and stuff like the warp that he's holding I haven't even started painting that's still gray so I don't know um yeah we'll see how we go it might be I don't know if I'm I don't know we'll see so for these final stages I then decided you know I, it was time to just get all my base coats down and then I could focus on returning to details and fixing them, improving them incrementally, deciding how many details and how many different patterns I wanted to introduce and how many I could get away with omitting. So for the toes and claws, I just use a kind of a Zandri dust as my base coat. I then lighten this up with mixes of Zandri dust and ivory, then up to ivory, and then I dull it all back down um, with a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. And that's generally what I do with toe claws, hand claws, and teeth, you know, mouth claws. Uh, for the tongue and in the mouth, I, I do pink. I do a pink, and then I do a wash of Karaburg Crimson. And then I try and br bring up some highlights on the tongue to make it look like it's wet and glistening. And yeah, from then it was just a matter of uh, refining details, getting my magnifiers out, looking at tiny, fucking drawing tiny dots over and over again. Um, oh yeah, I had to do the base. Uh, I completely brushed this step in so much so I didn't even realize that there were some of the details on the base that were on there. Like there's a little snake that's coming out of under the rock and I, I just covered that in several coats before I realized that it wasn't just like a root or whatever the fuck. Uh, and so I had to put some, a bit of color on there. I decided to get some purple in because the orb, I was like, what the fuck color 
am I gonna do the orb? I don't know. Originally I was thinking maybe I should do it like ivory um, color, but I think that too much of the ivory was just gonna make it look shit. Like it was good to have it as like the, the headdress and the skeleton and then the sort of skeleton thing that's going on on the, on the staff. But I decided purple and then tried to incorporate more purple into things like the crystal on the staff um, and like the rings around the little fucking staff. Um, anyway, that's fucking, that's done. Let's see some pictures. Anyway, that is the story of how I painted Kixi Taka. If you've got any questions about how I painted this, because I didn't really put that many details in the video, you know, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to say some stuff. Um, otherwise, man, I need to get to my back to my other projects because I keep getting distracted. So hopefully no more distractions and the next video will be about the mansion project. Um, anyway, I am, uh, this is the good mood. I'm the good dude and I'll see you in the future. The second coat is now completely dry.